Welcome to Saturday. Yay! Um, I'm about to cook a lot of things that are hanging around in the fridge and just wanted to say hi and also maybe we can talk about I guess whatever you want to talk about but I will just say I just finished season two of Love is Blind and it has surpassed my expectations of what a reality TV show could be. I truly enjoyed it. Has anyone else seen season two of Love is Blind? Um, absolutely fascinating. My favorite character, I kid you not, I thought he was like so dumb in the beginning, but truly I feel like he had the biggest character art. Shane, the like super hulky, built, preppy, white dude bro is my favorite character on that show. Um, there is just something so man-child about him, but he's so, he's working on his self-awareness, and I feel like I can really connect with that. There are some points in the show where you're just like, he's a fucking idiot. And then there are some points in the show where he, where you're like, he's just a fucking human being, and maybe, like, I am a fucking idiot sometimes, too. Um, but anyway, Shane. Give it up for Shane, y'all. I'm gonna put some more of my dishes away and uh, we can get prepping and cooking. y'all are saying in the chats. Yes, I love my earring too. Um, so when I was in college, I had an eBay addiction and an Amazon addiction before we knew how evil Amazon was. And I had an earring addiction and I just kept ordering earrings. And even I think after college, I ordered earrings, but I actually found these earrings tucked away in a box at my mom's. So I haven't worn these in probably a decade. Um, but I really like, these are really heavy. You can see that it's dragging my piercing hole down, but you know, whatever, YOLO. Um, who ate the leftovers? I did, Aaron ate some of them. Um, I unfortunately had to throw out the chips because they just, were so soggy and the napkins got glued to them and I was devastated because I love the chips and I was looking very much forward to eating them but everything else did get consumed um so were you not I knew those questions were coming hi Tokyo how is Tokyo um I hope to visit again uh I did rescue my backpack I came back and I washed it it's doing great um it's fine it survived middle school. Your backpack survives middle school and NYC lives to tell the tell, tale of, you know, having shrimp cocktail all over it. It's fine. I only have survivors in my life and that extends to my objects. Hello, Canada. My back is fine. It wasn't like a very bad twist. It was just for a very long time running from my upper back to like my mid to lower back there was a strain but it's fine um cleo let me check the netflix for you right now is there a show called cleo on the u.s netflix we will see yes there is it is available it has eight episodes apparently um
is basically like a lazy man's ratatouille. I basically bought uh, too much ingredients for my ratatouille recipe. I also drained some eggplants. These have been salted for like a week. I think I think they're still good. I can't be sure, but uh, you know, we won't know until we cook it, so we're gonna cook it. So it's just gonna be basically like a vegetable situation. chat real quick top chat live chat pop out chat get rid of this window so my computer doesn't die expand the chat magnify it because I am old and I cannot see um, this looks like a huge fairy tale eggplant I don't know what it actually is but I think at the farmers market they called it like a Dominican eggplant I don't know, don't quote me on that, I could be completely wrong. Um, as you can see, it is already starting to go in some spots. Dented, soft, these are pretty dangerous signs that it is going to start molding soon. So we're gonna be safe and we're gonna try to cut out as much of that as possible, but I'm still going to use it. The key thing to eggplant is you should always spend at least half an hour salting them and draining them so it takes out some of the astringency and like when it's when it squeaks against your teeth. Um, so we're gonna cook this a little later down the road. I have been pretty busy these couple of weeks, um, life is getting exciting at work. Um, last time we spoke, I was invited to non-disciplinary HR meetings. I have now been told that I will be attending disciplinary HR meetings. So it's an exciting life. I'm not upset. It's just a cliffhanger, you know? I know many of you will say that I've been asking for trouble, and in a way, if asking for justice is asking for trouble, then yes, I have asked for trouble. No regrets. I was just talking to a friend today and I was saying, you know, not all of my life decisions have yielded 100% excellent results and not all of them have made me happy in the moment, but I don't regret anything because those choices are what has contributed towards me today. So um, I will keep doing me because that's all I can do. And what other people choose to do in response is out of my control and not my responsibility and I will just play the hand of cards that I've been dealt. Um, there is a rule book which if you abide by you have more of a likelihood of not getting into trouble but I have decided that the rule book does not work for me and there is no point for me in winning that game that the rule book tells you you could win if you played by the rule book and once the game becomes defunct for you and once the game does not apply for you and it isn't a priority for you, then you don't play the game and you don't need the rule book. That's all. Now because I don't want to sit forever waiting for the eggplant to like marinate in the salt, I'm going to try to cut them as small as possible so that the salt can penetrate faster. 
The smaller you cut them, the more total surface area is available on the eggplant all around, so the faster the salt will work its way in there. I definitely did not cut this uh, in an organized fashion at all, so they're gonna look quite rustic, which is fine because it's gonna get cooked into mush anyway, which is kind of the point of ratatouille. Um, I'm not making the ratatouille that you saw in the movie ratatouille, I'm making the ratatouille that looks like mush. So don't get too excited. I promise you nothing. Um, Um, according to HR, it is not about my union activity. Obviously, that would be illegal if they're punishing me for union activity. What they're telling me right now is that it concerns my behaviors uh, on the team. So I'm sure I have said something that's offended someone somewhere. Um, I'm excited to learn what I have said. I don't doubt that there is room for me to develop as a person. I don't doubt that I've offended people. Um, I just want to know, is HR truly telling the truth when they say we're here to help you become a better person? Because that's what I want them to do. If they're here to help, I'll take the, I'll take the help, you know? But if they're going to say that they're going to help me, but actually they're punishing me while saying they're going to help me, that's just the wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, leadership has told me to use HR as a resource. I have been told by management, my direct managers, that HR will help. So if I am given the message that I trust my leaders and trust in the leadership, then I am simply doing what I'm told. And if I should get into trouble by letting HR help me, then I will know at the end of the day that even if I do what I'm told, I still lose the game. Which checks out, because most games that you're told to play don't intend on you winning anyway. So let's just play it out, right guys? I was promised coaching too. I actually writ I wrote in response two weeks after my last meeting with them to ask them about the coaching because they had promised me coaching, but what resulted in my um, reply email was, coaching will come at a later time, this meeting will be about disciplinary issues. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe if I didn't write that follow-up email, I wouldn't have gotten myself into a disciplinary meeting. I don't know what the chain of events is. As with always, HR is very opaque. Um, they lean on the fact that they aren't allowed to disclose certain things because confidentiality, but you know, we all know what confidentiality really means. Remember always that information is power, knowledge is power, and the more information and knowledge that you retain and hoard, the more power you hoard. So the whole dynamic of HR relies on the fact that you know as little as possible. That is the way they win the game. Okay, so first things first, let me wash. This is a garden tomato that my cousin grew. It is absolutely delicious. I was thinking about cooking it into this ratatouille, but I'm a little bit hungry now, so I might actually just eat it. Um, it did get a little soft. I'm sorry, Tim, that I ruined your perfectly in-season tomato by waiting too long. But better late than never, and I can still salvage most of it. I just want to show you how gorgeous this tomato flesh is. Do you see the shine? Do you see that? It tastes so creamy. Mmm. So good. Thank you, Cousin Tim. Um... So what I will do with this tomato is slice it and eat it and enjoy its natural goodness. Mom used to sprinkle granulated 
of sugar on raw tomatoes. I have tried it with these. It is very good. I just want to taste the tomato on its own. But if you've never tried granulated sugar sprinkled on tomatoes and they're, you know, good tomatoes, try it. It tastes like fruity candy. I think Delish will survive without me. Corporations will run forever. It's not going to be the end of the world. We are all replaceable. My ego is big, but it is not that big. Um, the, the whole team at Delish is a solid group of people. Once again, I can't say it enough. I love my fucking coworkers. I have nothing but respect for my coworkers for the most part. Um, there are great people who deserve better than what our company is currently willing to give them, which is why I'm going so hard supporting the union because we all deserve better. Um, but Delish will go on with or without me. garbanzo beans caddy you need to look up my um chickpea video on delish it was filmed in june of 2020 when everything was going to shit and that was the first video in which i cried because i had an existential crisis moment where i was like why am i filming this stupid video that never ends while people are getting shot by police and nobody is changing anything about the way that our society runs. Um, and I simply could not do that video without acknowledging it on camera because the guilt of working a job that had absolutely nothing constructive to contribute to the societal problems that we've been facing and will face forever and ever and ever because our society is so fucked um, was just too intense to ignore. cutting up oh I realize that you can't see shit eh. I'm such a good content maker now can you see shit now you can see shit but now I can't see you all right I know a lot of people watch my videos on delish but a lot of other people also watch other videos on delish listen guys None of us are that important, and I'm very happy to have your support, and I thank you so much for watching the stuff that I make. It means a lot to me to know that you enjoy the work that I do. It's very fulfilling, but let's be realistic here. Companies will company with or without you. They'll find a way to make a living, you know, turning this eternal consumeristic capitalistic hellhole that they have been doing for ages now, and we're just tiny little cogs inside of it and you may be angry about things that are happening to you but you truly do not matter at the end of the day neither do i none of us matter okay the machine has overtaken our human will and desire i don't know if you follow aaron's instagram but you know between his dumbass meme reposts and like random rants, um, he posts some quite enlightening excerpts from this philosopher named Elul, and Elul talks about technique, and technique is a term that refers to basically this machine that we've created where our society just runs on this technology that we've all built, and the technology has basically started to swallow us up into the rhythm of the technology, and so we've basically created this monster of sorts that we've lost control over kind of like frankenstein um it's an age-old tale it's just gotten so bad that we don't even realize how bad it is because we're so deep in it we can't see outside of it because there is no longer as far as our existence is concerned an outside 
the technology anymore. Um, so, I'm very happy that y'all are here, that I have a place where I can rant to you about all of these things, but I'm also not, um, you know, naive enough to think that, like, <laughs> these lives will have any sort of impact on our society beyond our brains, but that's not to undercut how powerful our brains can be. It's just that we need more than a hundred people's brains. We need, like, a couple million people's brains to be on the same page before we can affect change and it's very hard organizing people together and I have learned this firsthand trying to participate in a union of over 400 people it is very hard to get people on the same page but god damn it once we get people on the same page we can do a whole lot of shit I'm gonna eat some out of season nectarines. Um, I just bought them. They're not very good. They're not bad either. is nothing close to its glory days just like bon appetit they're still running they're still making money they're still going you know things will go even though they will they will never be what they once were but things will go that should give you hope too for the things that should be doing better but aren't doing better it can always be better and it can always be worse and there's just no guarantee in life of things staying the same um so, it truly is irrelevant to me what I do with my life. I am not invested in the results of my existence at all. But I do want to make sure that I'm not miserable in my existence. And, you know, the choices that I make to ensure that I'm not miserable may not be conventionally sound, but convention does not work for my happiness a lot of the time. And so, even though a lot of people discourage me from taking the unconventional paths because they don't see it as secure and safe as the conventional paths, it does not mean that that is the proper choice for me. I have to find out for myself what is the right choice to make on my own because I am not conventional and I don't care for it anyway. Garlic nectarine, yum. Don't worry about me. 
I can always go back to working in restaurants. There's always a way to make money. There's always a way to survive. I am resourceful and I'll find a way. minutes and 39 seconds. If you catch me selling merch, please cancel me, okay? My ethos will be to not create even more trash on this trash island that we live on. Please, God forbid. I feel very, 2022 June feels so very passionately about not creating more shit. I want you to hold me accountable to that any way you can, please. Just fucking call me out. see Buddha on the road, you should kill him. Yeah, if you see June selling merch, you should kill her. Ratatouille just has like basil, pepper, salt, but there is a French seasoning called caplet épice, and it means four spice. And since it is like a French five spice of, of sorts, I want to see if I can add in some white pepper, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves. Apparently that's what it is. Hold on. Let me just make sure Wikipedia agrees. Got a fat check. Yes. Okay, so it has ground pepper, cloves, nutmeg, and dry ginger. So we're going to try a little bit of that. Just to see what it tastes like. Because how would you know unless you experiment? That's the nutmeg.
doesn't taste like shit, besides salting and draining it, is you gotta use a lot of oil, guys. Eggplant needs fat. So with proper ratatouille, traditional cooking method, you should be cooking the vegetables one at a time, taking it out of the pan and then putting the next one in, taking that out of the pan and then cooking the next one in until you have all of them. And then you combine them all together in the end to stew them. I'm very lazy. I don't want to do more dishes. So we're doing it this way. It's not going to taste as great, but it's fine. It's vegetables at the end of the day. As long as I'm feeding myself vegetables, I am happy. Um, I love the increase in unionization. I'm not more optimistic about my own union. I mean, we have been unionized for two years now, y'all. Over two years now. We're still bargaining. I, I know that we will have a contract sooner or later, but this process of unionization and participating in the organizing committee and the bargaining committee 
has just completely demoralized me in terms of showing me who my true employer is. Um, had I not participated in unionization, I would have never understood just how bad corporations are, but now I understand, and so for that, I am thankful that I have gained this experience and gained this insight and that I understand the dynamics of how corporations work now. You don't know until you've experienced something firsthand how it affects people, and now I can completely see more of the connections of why people are so against corporations. Like, you know, it's a different thing when they tell you slavery is bad. It's another thing when you actually experience how bad slavery is. Um, and before people cancel me, I'm not comparing working a white collar job at a media corporation to being a slave. Absolutely not. I'm just saying, you can understand the concept of something to be bad without experiencing it, but once you do experience it, it hits differently. Okay, now if you want to cancel me, you still can. You know, open to canceling. Vitamin check, thank you. Yes, you betcha I am invoking my wine garden rights and calling for a union rep to be at this meeting. I call for a union rep to be at my previous two meetings that were non-disciplinary, so for sure I'm getting a union rep to be present with me for this disciplinary one. If you are at a unionized workplace, you should always invoke your Weingarten rights. It only serves to tip the dynamic towards the worker to have a union rep present with you as a witness, as a note taker, as a fact checker. I just choked on my own saliva. You know, bodies be bodies. <clears throat> It's not a great time to be any sort of essential worker because it has become increasingly clear that nobody in charge cares because there's nothing to benefit them monetarily or capitalistically to support people who are essential workers like teachers and nurses. Um, the people who they can support are big pharma, tech, you know, all those jobs that get you big dollar dollar bill signs on your paychecks uh, because that's where the money is. Uh, probably like defense and military contracts and all of that shit that's just literally killing people. Um, those are the industries that profit the most. So, of course, we are going to just basically make society increasingly more miserable until we kill off almost everyone and then we realize, oh fuck! We needed those people. Too late. Hi, Virginia Beach. Sorry, Granny Fabulous. I will probably never write a cookbook uh, for Budget Eats. It's just not, it's just not a thing. There are already many cookbooks that exist that teach you how to use up scraps. Um, I've even auctioned off a couple of them on my Instagram, uh, maybe like a year and a half ago. Um, there's just no point in oversaturating the market. Budget Eats, I think, works as a video format. It's fun and entertaining, 
and the concepts that I have to share with y'all in terms of budget cooking uh, are already in those videos. So I don't feel the need to package them in a book form. That's just killing trees at that point. And I also don't know who's going to pay money to buy a print product. It's not accessible. But yes, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Many people have asked. I understand the sentiment. I just don't think it's a necessary contribution to the world. Um, and I don't feel enough motivation to actually act on it. But I appreciate you. Mom don't have no recipes. I come from a Chinese background. We don't use written recipes. It's not a culturally Chinese thing, as far as I know. All the recipes that exist are my grandma going, you know, just add flour until it looks right. That's it. Yes, Mark Fisher is a great read. If you are into theory and sociology and, you know, the detriment of capitalism, you might want to give Mark Fisher a read. I haven't read all of his stuff. I've probably just read like five pages, but it's enough to understand how fucked we are. Treat water cookbook. I'm gonna give it to you right now. You ready? You take a tablespoon of water, you grind up all of your treats, and then you add like two fat pinches to your tablespoon of water. You put it in a bowl, give it a little swirl, and then give it to your pet. They will be delighted if they're not picky as fuck. That was easy. I never thought writing a book would be that easy. We did it. Congrats, yay. Hi, Arizona. I truly do feel lucky that I have Freddy. He is truly not a picky cat. He will eat anything. Right, Fred? Freddy? Freddy? Oh, hi. Come. Yeah? Meow? Yeah, meow? Okay. What else? What else do you want to meow about, Freddy? Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi to your family? Hmm? Okay. Ow! Jesus Christ, we're going to need to clip your nails. Fuck me. <sighs> Freddy, your nails are sharp. I will stir fry the bitter melon, I think, but I might also blanch some of it because mom used to just serve it to me as like a cold dish. I'm always very happy to hear that folks are connecting with my sharing of grief and I'm more than happy to share it because me sharing my grief comes from a place of selfishness and this is another illustration of how being selfish sometimes doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad person. It actually opens up doors for communication and connection. I shared my grief because it was too much for me to handle and bear on my own so it felt like a relief of emotional, physical, psychological all sorts of therapeutic burdens and um, 
to know that folks are resonating and talking about things that they formerly didn't talk about or express to other people is very fulfilling. So thank you for sharing that um, you have found a sort of community here. It's very nice. Did you know, I just had a talk with an editor yesterday, and he told me that apparently, and I, don't, I didn't fact check this, but it shocked me, and if it's true, it's truly devastating. Something like a third of the kids in the New York City school system are heading back to school this year having lost a caretaker of sorts over the past year or past two years. Whatever the case may be, if that's true, just thinking about a third of the city's kids trying to survive grief. Um, again, I didn't fact check this. I don't know if it's true. This was just, someone told me this number. and to think that there are kids who are a third or less of my age going through the same thing man man I was also talking to um, someone about how I think there are two types of people who have emerged from our years of being in a pandemic. The first kind of person, and I'm not saying it's a black and white thing, it's all a spectrum, but if we were to polarize it into binaries, the first type of person experiences pandemic burnout so badly, like we all do and are, that they just wanna go back to normal. They wanna go back to the lives they had pre-2020 shitstorm. And I get it, and I understand it, but I belong to the second camp of people where I have seen all these things and I cannot unsee them and they have changed me and I have changed and it was very uncomfortable change at first, but I have come to embrace it and I intend on continuing in the following years with the changes installed. Um, and I think that for me feels like the right thing to do. I can't ignore all of these experiences. I'm not able to, it is out of my control. Um, and just trying to digest everything that has happened, everything that we've seen, everything that has fallen apart, everything that has been reconstructed that should never have been there in the first place, um, it's pretty devastating. Ratatouille is pretty good. Definitely should have cooked them separately. The eggplant is a little rubbery, but you know, I knew what I was doing to myself and I still did it, so that's my, that's my fault.
changed so much as a person in the past two years, y'all. Um, I have gotten way older. You can physically see it on my face. My body doesn't bounce back the same way anymore. A lot of that is just natural aging that comes with the passage of time, but I think a lot of it is just kind of soaking up the pandemic trauma. The body is just like, fuck, you broke me. Um, and I get it. And I'm trying to practice acceptance with myself and just being like, you will never be the you that you were in 2019. You have to let that be okay. Otherwise you will be miserable for far longer than you have to be. And why subject myself to that if it is out of my control? And it is. Um, so I need to just appreciate and give myself credit for the ways in which I have changed, whether they be conventionally good or bad. And I think I need to honor them in order to be a good friend to myself. I am learning how to be a good friend to myself. Um, it has taken me three decades to get to this point where I'm like, you can't hate on yourself anymore. gorgeous skin like this skin is a skin my mom had in her early 40s I'm in my early 30s like I'm 10 years I'm aging 10 years faster than my mom did mom was mom was a true queen give it up for OG queen If there's one thing that you set as your resolution for your life going forward, I really do think it's worth becoming your friend. It's not gonna be easy, all friendships take work, but I do think it is worth it. If anything in this world is worth it. Um, wasabi peas, you don't gotta do nothing. Here's how I'm looking at it. Anniversary of my mom's death will be up in October. My birthday is next month. Her birthday is in October. It's gonna, it, whether or not I am cognizant of it, it will consciously, unconsciously, subconsciously affect me in so many different ways. You don't have to do anything. You just have to exist. You just have to be. Existing just means you breathe. Um, there is no inherent value in my life. For me, that's my perspective. There is no inherent value. The only objective I have is in reducing misery for myself as much as possible without hurting other people as much as possible. Um, and to put it bluntly, the way I've been thinking about it is, I feel so much grief and guilt and shame and sadness and anger for the ways in which I have never, ever, ever given mom what she deserved to have. But it is too little too late for that. And the reality is that mom is dead. She is gone. And that is both something that will forever make me sad and something that I will learn to let liberate me. I am learning to live in a way that I never lived before when mom was alive for various reasons. Mom always disagreed with some of my choices in life because she thought they were unsafe and she always wanted security and the best for me, but her best wasn't my best. So now that mom isn't here, it doesn't mean that I'm completely abandoning mom because I can't because she's part of me biologically, socially speaking. She raised me. She 
incorporated herself into me. She gave herself and poured herself into me. I can never be separate from my mom. And so knowing that, every choice that I make in this life is a choice with mom in both mind, body, and heart. And maybe soul, if that exists. I will continue to try to honor my gut feelings and instincts and do what feels right. I will not always make the right choice. I will regret some of my decisions. And that is perfectly fine. So you just do you. You do whatever you need to do to be okay with the moment that you're in and you do whatever you need to do in order to be okay with yourself and you do your best to do nothing else but to be a friend to yourself. Whatever that may mean. It's gonna mean a different thing to everyone. You have to figure out what you need in a friend and you have to define that friendship for yourself. My favorite mush food to cook ever is lentils. that nationally but I think we were talking about New York New York City numbers I don't know if that's true but thank you for the fact check I appreciate it wish we did more fact checking honestly love the spices in here. We might have to go in with a little bit of something sweet. Mmm. Okay. How about some hot pepper jelly? table at Delish so it that must be like two and a half years old at least now probably three I'm not really doing anything on the anniversary I never like anniversaries I never like birthdays I feel like they are kind of detrimental to me because they prioritize like this fetishization of time which is a human construct, which is completely meaningless and arbitrary. I like to do birthday celebrations whenever it feels like a celebratory day. Um, I don't like people saying happy birthday to me. That stemmed from like me being depressed and not wanting to be reminded of my birth once upon a time, but now I'm just like, literally every day is a birthday because every day you wake up slightly different, you just don't feel it, you don't realize it, but every day is a birthday, and that is something that can mentally, emotionally, psychologically free me from the self that I was yesterday. Um, and that might be, in a once in a while, a healthy thing for me to do and just like reset because, you know, sometimes I hate the things I've done. Sometimes I hate the person that I was. Sometimes I'm not proud of what happened yesterday. And if I can just wake up and try to train myself to think like, hey, birthday, <laughs> celebrate yourself for yourself today and just work on letting go of past grievances. You will never be perfect. Never. Never, never, you will never be perfect. Don't feel sad about it.
Think about instead, who told you you have to be perfect? Because I think they kind of lied to you. Now, Co, you can get your cheesecake on your birthday, but like if every day is your birthday, you can get cheesecake every day. You know what I'm saying? children. Not ones that pop out of my badge anyway. I'm going to add a little bit of MSG because MSG is always such a great agent in tying together the sweet and the savory and just making them melt into each other seamlessly. I don't use MSG in everything. Don't mistake me. It's not like a magical ingredient, although it can be when applied properly. But when you're trying to bring together something salty and sweet, into a more of a harmonious balance. MSG is good. Wow, are you guys excited about this ASMR? How many of you are freaking out, grossed out at the sound, and how many of you are like, oh yeah. All right, enough. was a bowl that mom used to use. She used to store food and leftovers in it. She also used to put stir fries in here and use it as a serving platter when she used to cook for me. There's a little bit of rust developing on the edges, but I love it. It's so cute. Makes pleasant sounds. Um, and yeah. I would say getting over grief isn't not crying when you think of them. I think a sign of having digested grief is that you are fully embracing yourself when you do cry. Instead of feeling shame, anger, frustration, sadness, it is just a neutral state that you almost welcome into your life at that moment. because it's remembrance. And for that brief time of remembrance, they are vividly here with you. internet there will be comments about everything uh, I think through the past two years of putting uh, YouTube content up I've learned to kind of filter out what I need to disregard I don't think most people mean any ill will with their comments I think most of them are just processing 
whatever they need to process through their own lenses and sometimes we don't agree with those lenses and so you know you can call them out but that doesn't mean they're going to change um and you can call them out but that might make them angry because as many of you have taught me anger is not a primary emotion it's often a secondary emotion so when you do call them out like that they get angry not because they think you're wrong they get angry because it's their natural defense mechanism kicking in so you know we can talk about what comments you're not comfortable with um, one thing that I am trying to work on, and this is something that I learned in college, but I've never quite mastered it, is that when you communicate, you stick to I statements. So for example, I feel uncomfortable about this comment rather than these comments are not so cool. Kind of coming from a subjective point of view and placing value judgments through that subjective lens rather than placing a value judgment through an objective lens will lead to less conflict. I'm not saying you're wrong for saying it from an objective perspective point of view it could be factually more correct than it is wrong to point out those comments are not great for various reasons but I'm just saying it might be more conducive to a peaceful conflict resolution if you were to word it differently and again I say this but I struggle with this a lot so I am also very much working on the I statements something that I've been aware of for over a decade and something that I'm still working very hard to integrate into my own practices. Oh, um, the Yankee shorts, they're 100% cotton. These were a mom purchase and she found them, I think, at either TJ Maxx or Marshalls for a fucking dollar. So thank you, mom, for these comfy ass boxer shorts. I don't like the Yankees. I don't pay attention to baseball. Uh, but if I have to choose a team, go Mets, cause Queens. Okay, objectively, Trump is one of the dumbest presidents that we've had. I wouldn't say he's one of the worst because Objectively, Trump's presidency made transparent so much of the bureaucratic bullshit and violence and like manipulative international politics strategy that we would have never seen so transparently before. He gave us a peek into the like absolute Satan house that is the White House. Um, so in a way, thank you, President Trump for being dumb enough to let us see exactly what goes on behind those closed doors and making it digestible for the common man. the common man. So, um, because I stopped paying attention to politics, did Trump get us into any wars? If so, which ones? Can you remind me, please? Educate me. Educate me, internet.
this into any wars. I think de facto he's better than Bush. Both Bushes probably. I'm pretty sure a lot of people died in those wars that the Bushes started. But again, I'm very ignorant when it comes to politics and history. So you let me know. Elizabeth, you can keep saying no, but you're not explaining anything. point listen I'm not a Trump defender I think he's a horrible piece of shit and he deserves to die under the I don't know weight of a thousand angry virgins um but at some point we have to take some group responsibility for what happened during this whole pandemic and I'm not saying everyone is guilty I am saying that there is a collective responsibility um, that stems all the way from the lack of participation in politics to the lack of transparency that we've all grown used to bureaucratically, that we don't, as a republic that runs on democratic standards, that we've lost the power to push for sway and change in the way that our society is organized. I mean, I don't have a solution for it, but I'm just saying, we need to stop pointing fingers at the select individuals that are in government. And we need to think about collectively what we can do to change that system, right? Because we can just, we can, we can keep, I am guilty of this too. We can keep complaining about the same bullshit over and over again but that actually feeds into the system that enables the system to keep surviving the way it always has. If you have not seen 15 Million Merits, season one, episode two of Black Mirror, see it now. Watch the first season, second episode of Black Mirror and get back to me. Voting and telling people to vote is not effective, right? Because voting is not mandatory, we don't have a day off to go vote. The voting system is convoluted. There are so many obstacles to different folks in different states and different districts to actually getting their vote in. Can you imagine what would happen if we actually had electronic voting and we gave people a day off to do research and to vote? Like it's not an individual responsibility. Again, it is a collective responsibility and that is what is so hard about making change happen in the world. It's not on one person to do it. It's on most people to do it. All people if possible. But right now we just don't know how to organize the people together to do it. beautiful moment. Love that moment. We need more humor in politics because whether or not we want to admit it, our life is a joke. So we either embrace the joke or we cry, right? 
I'm not saying don't take anything seriously. I'm just saying once in a while, fucking laugh at it. Because you will break if you can't laugh at shit. Your vote does count. Of course it does. But again, it will have no real impact until more votes come in. And that's a systemic thing. That's not an individual thing. eggplant that can be stir fried, but I don't know what to make with it right now, so let's think about bitter melon, shall we? is amazing when stir-fried with eggs so that is what we're going to try but okay for those of you who don't know my history with bitter melon the bitter melon is a very special vegetable to me. It is a vegetable that truly tastes disgusting. It is a vegetable that mom has always tried to feed me when I was young because, you know, its bitterness is apparently in Chinese cuisine considered to be like a, yeah, like an antioxidant, basically. It will save you from anything from cancer, deadly diseases, and like bad men, I guess. It's a cure-all. Um, mom used to have these eating competitions where she would bring out a bowl of bitter melon and have me and my like friend in China go at it and just see which child eats the most bitter melon and that's the best child. So I have developed a complex over the years with bitter melon. I've never liked eating it. Mom's always insisted I should eat it. Um, and now that mom's gone, I'm gonna give it another try. I do believe you take the seed out, right? This this goes, right? You're scooping out all the bad men when you scoop out the seeds. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this and I'm just going to fucking eat it raw. Okay, here we go. It smells kind of like a green pepper crossed with a habanero and like, 
like a spring salad mix greens. What do you know? It's not that bad. The aftertaste is a little bad though. Mm. All right. Slicing it into half moons. It is quite a beautiful vegetable. It's so, it looks like delicata squash. It has these beautiful round ridges and when you half moon them, they look almost like flowers really. I think there is a dish where you basically try to keep the melon whole like this, scoop out the middle and then you fill it with filling and you cook the whole thing. Sometimes it's like meat inside. I can imagine that tasting good. No, it doesn't have spiciness. It just smells like that peppery smell. Very tame for the most part. Okay, so that's half a bitter melon. I'm going to switch out this pan. I don't think we need it. But it is still hot, so I'm gonna put it in the oven. So I don't wanna melt anything. In the oven. We're gonna use our trusty cast iron. I should sharpen my knives more frequently, but I probably haven't since mom died, so over a year now, which is insane. Do you guys remember me doing a live where I sharpened my knives after mom died? Because I can't remember. I can't, I don't think that would have been a big priority for me. So I know in American cuisine, People prioritize scrambling their eggs and not over scrambling them. Just like a soft, curdly scramble. Oh yeah, I did sharpen my mom's knife. You're right. Okay, so maybe almost a year since I last sharpened this. But in Chinese cuisine, every time I've had stir-fried eggs, they've been like hard, overdone, bouncy, rubbery scrambled eggs. So we're just gonna cook the eggs first with some garlic and then I'm gonna throw the bitter melon in. We'll maybe season it with a little bit of soy sauce. I've never made this dish before, guys. I have never voluntarily cooked bitter melon before, ever. Um, so this is an experiment. If you have tips, speak now or forever hold your peace. memory. I would have never remembered half the shit that happened in my life if you guys didn't remember it for me. Amazing. You think I should cook the bitter melon first? Hmm. Okay, fine. I'll do it because you told me to.
always removing one ingredient, cooking the other is a smart thing to do. For sure. I'm just really lazy. It always tastes better when you put more effort into it. You know, that's just the way the world works. I got the bitter melon from um, the store that I always go to for budget eats. Dollar and up. Photographer who comes from a Thai background told me that her mom cooks um, bitter melon and eggs with fish sauce. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of fish sauce in addition to our soy. break down the bitter melon a little bit. It's like a gooseneck whistling kettle that Aaron burnt the shit out of on the thermometer plastic so we can't see it anymore, but it came from Amazon. I had a gift card. I had to use it. Although I guess I could have donated the gift card now that I mention it. But I'm just not a good human being sometimes, okay? Give me a break. I'm allowed to be bad. That's my secondary mantra after we will all die. June's three mottos going into the next month is we will all die, I'm allowed to be bad, and I am going to try to be my own friend. There you go. Take what you will out of that. At what point do I know the bitter melon is done? I guess I'll just have to taste it. Come here, little one. Oh, God. That turned so bitter. <laughs> what happened? It was not this. Oh, my God. Mom. Texture is good. Flavor, debatable. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't see that you don't cook it too much. I'm sorry. I messed it up. Use the pepper jelly up. I was gonna add sugar, but we have the pepper jelly. I'm trying to clear my fridge of random crap. Do we have any suggestions for the other half of the bitter melon? <laughs> Stephanie will not contribute towards your slacking. You must take accountability of your own life decisions. Mmm, salad. Very interesting. What's the flavor profile though on the salad? I'm open to a salad, guys. I'm very open to a salad. I am just going back for my ratatouille though. It's quite delicious while it's warm. So I do have to cook shrimp because I made the decision to defrost some shrimp and now the shrimp is defrosted and I must cook it. And I made that decision because next week I won't be having a lot of like savory proteiny things and I had the shrimp in my freezer. So let's cook the shrimp. Maybe bitter melon will taste good with some shrimp. How do I stay thin? Genetics. Um, I try to go to the gym every day now. During the pandemic, I did gain like 15 pounds, but also grief adds weight too. Um, but yeah, mostly genetics. So you either got it or you don't. It's a lottery, like most of life. There is no secret. Some people go for plastic surgery, though. You can always try that. Or an eating disorder, but I don't recommend that. I'm still climbing out of my hole. It doesn't really work, you know? It just makes you hate yourself more, so... At the end of the day, not worth it. Garlic butter shrimp. Mmm. Okay, before we go any further, I would just like to taste the bitter melon and the eggs on their own. Remember, we still have this eggplant that we have to cook. My cell phone might be running out of battery too, so not sure how long this cooking adventure will go on for. Um, do you like my nails? 
my two nails that I decided to paint silver because the nail polish fell out of the bathroom sink cabinet and I was like, ooh, nail polish, let's put it on. Have you ever thought of doing stand-up? I can't write. I can probably do like some sort of improv stand-up where I just feed off of the crowd energy. I would love to do that, actually. It's basically what all my first dates are. I just roast people and that's why I never get second dates. I've been told on first dates that I'm an interrogator because I just keep asking questions and people feel very put on the spot and I'm like, listen, first of all, why are you on a date if you don't want to know about the other person? And second of all, if you're not in touch with yourself enough to have an answer to my questions, then that shows me what kind of person you are. So yes, I am interrogating you and I think you're weak. Yeah, and that's why I In my experience, you can't eat too many sesame seeds, but you will poop them out. So your poop will kind of smell like sesame seeds. Will we get demonetized for talking about defecation? Possible. You just never know these days. Here's our tramp. Smells fine, we're gonna rinse it though, cause it's been defrosty. And it's got juices, yum. I don't have a set list of questions. Obviously I adjust my questions to what the person reveals about themselves. And I'm not like, I'm not actually there to interrogate them. I just want to know about them, but I think the way that I communicate is just way too direct. Um, and a lot of people feel like I'm attacking them, but I'm really just very curious. stomachache when you eat too many different things too quickly because I have one. It does not feel great. But I will keep cooking because the show must go on and I don't want this shrimp to sit in my fridge one day longer. It will not get cooked tomorrow. What should we do with this eggplant? I don't want to keep it anymore. I'm thinking garlic, sesame oil, cumin seeds, coriander, a little stir fry, you know? Thank you for your input that I didn't listen to. Um, garlic with eggplant is crucial ingredient. So eggplant needs salt, it needs fat, it needs garlic. If you disagree, you must write me a 250 word paragraph on why you disagree.
Yeah, tomorrow this will just be like leftover central where I mash up all of the things that I cooked. When you're too lazy to cut your garlic before they enter the pan, you just cut them in the pan. emojis because like I put off on using emojis as a form of communication for too many years and then I discovered that all of my texts were getting misinterpreted because everybody uses emojis to be like tonal shifters and modifiers and because I wasn't using emojis in my text I either sounded way too straightforward or like the irony wasn't coming through emojis are crucial for the way we communicate now. I'm not even being sarcastic. Hello, Betsy. exciting at all but I think what I'm actually gonna do after I cook the eggplant is I'm going to basically try to boil the shrimp blanch them very quickly just until they're cooked that way they're kind of a blank slate for however I want to dress them later on in the week I could put them into a rice paper do a spring roll I could dip them in a spicy sriracha mayo I could chop them up and maybe like blend them into like a can of tuna and mash up boiled egg and put them on toast. I don't know, the options are endless. But uh, about that bitter melon, I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Not enough oil. Eggplant is kind of like mushrooms. If you want them to taste luxurious, you must give them oil. All right, time for the cumin. Oh, I'm gonna go in with the Trader Joe's umami seasoning. By the way, one of the most underrated spice mixes is this. So if you have a Trader Joe's near you, you should try this out. You don't use butter often, why? Um, because then you like have to take out a knife and cut into it. I also just reserve butter for baking purposes. It is an animal product. I don't try to use animal product as a baseline for my own cooking. I try to stay kind of vegan. I mean, but I am cooking shrimp because it is leftover from recipe testing, but olive oil, you know, you just unlid the cap. I'm lazy, that's why. That's the only reason why, honestly. I'm giving you bullshit answers. I'm lazy. Olive oil, you just uncap it, pour it in. Butter, you have to take it out of the fridge. You have to unwrap it. You have to slice a knife through it, and then you have to wash the knife. Then you have to fold it back in. You have to put it back in the fridge. It's a whole thing. raw a thing because I think I'm just going to make some like light quick pickles with it then.
Oh god, it's so bitter. I have a feeling that once you slice it open, it's kind of like garlic. It releases its essence, it, but instead of the kind of aromatic savoriness of garlic, all you get is like poison bitterness. Don't know why I'm doing this to myself, honestly. It's going in a clean jar. I'm gonna put some salt and sugar and vinegar in here and shake it up and just let it sit. Maybe instead of vinegar, or sorry, maybe instead of sugar, we'll just use up this pepper jelly. Wow, look at us, finishing shit. And uh, what I'll do is rinse out this jam jar with the vinegar that I'm about to use. Just go live your life. We'll have another round soon. Like an onion, yeah. I've never made bitter melon this way ever, um, but I can imagine that it's probably gonna have the same effect. Hopefully it'll taste good. Won't know till you try. in the wild. It's a nice change for me too. I think I think I needed a break. We have had a Fred sighting. Flushing is called flushing. I don't know why places are called places. Not my area of study, unfortunately. We're gonna salt the water gently.
The cell roti is really special. Mmm. The eggplant is definitely too salty, so I think it's definitely going to have to get mashed up with something else. My bad. show my idea for the show was not only just for it to be another food vlog it's to introduce you to the neighborhoods too so I really was very um, hopeful that the edit would contain a lot of walking shots and surroundings all of that so I'm very happy that you guys watched it I'm happy that you enjoyed it if you have any suggestions for future episodes we're open to it let us know Comments are a constructive place sometimes. too low but don't you think that $25 to cook for a whole week is also low isn't that the whole pull of budget eats I think 50 is already a lot of money but you know we wouldn't really be doing a feature on a whole neighborhood's food offering if we only had like $20 so Honestly, when I go out to eat with friends, if I'm paying over 30 for a meal that day, I feel guilty. Because having come from a restaurant background where I earned sometimes minimum wage was $10 an hour, I'm thinking like after tax, I had to work five, six hours to earn this meal. Like that's just not worth it for me, you know? budget eats if it didn't have some kind of price element to it you know wouldn't be the same if I said let's spend a hundred today a hundred just sounds too much free chips. That's why I picked that place. There's, listen, Jackson Heights is filled with tacos. Those are really good tacos, but they also came with free chips and salsa. So,
Yes, the backpack did survive indeed. So shrimp, you just wait for it to turn opaque and pink, um, and you should be done. It shouldn't take more than like two to three minutes, honestly, to cook shrimp. And if you do overcook your shrimp, it becomes sad. We don't want sad shrimp. We want happy, bouncy shrimp that are nice and tender. shrimp sit in there for a little bit longer. Whew. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. shrimp broth? Yes, absolutely. I didn't because I know I'm not going to use it because I have no time to. Maybe I can get Freddy to come say bye. I don't have an AC in the kitchen. I think that defeats the purpose of an AC. I think an AC belongs in a place where it should stay cool and not be fighting with cooking all the time, you know? Yes, the moths are technically popo, but they're also like pro bono popo, which kind of changes the dynamic. When you get paid to be a cop, you have interests 
beyond the stated purpose of your job. Whenever there's money involved, there is evil abound. So we have the best popo around because I don't pay them shit. Thank you for your service. Free labor. It's like we're communism or something. And I'm the ultimate exploiter. But I'm benevolent, so you guys put up with me for now. But should I ever cross the line of service, then you will Marie Antoinette me. And I would deserve it. If the people say I should be Marie Antoinette, then I probably do deserve to be Marie Antoinette. Breeze coming through the window now. This is the way I intend on eating probably most of these shrimp. A squiggle of QP and a squiggle of gochujang shiraksha. Cheers. Mm. I do eat the shrimp tails, although sometimes they will pierce you and hurt you. You just have to be aware that that is a price you will pay. Beautiful boy. What a beautiful boy. Hmm? Yeah? Do you like pets? You got a lot of hair, buddy. You always have this much hair? Don't go chasing waterfalls. We might get demonetized. Okay. Um, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the live. I hope you enjoyed Freddy. Yes? 
and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your weekend. I don't know if I will be going live tomorrow. I also have nothing to cook, so unless you Instagram DM me with a hot topic to discuss, I think I'll just enjoy my night as a boring person who watches reality TV shows now and whose role model is a really weird, stocky, white blonde guy named Shane. Spelled with a Y? God, my life is weird. Freddy. Yes. Say goodnight. Goodnight, yo.